here we have what this landscape looked like before of just turf grass. There's a, a couple different species of grasses in there, but by and large, it's a monoculture. It's all one flat-ish plain um, of, of planting, so not a lot of structural diversity, not a lot of flowering, not a lot of habitat. Here in this landscape, we are able to get 20 or so different plants in here, so huge amount of diversity comparatively. When this starts to grow up and fill in, we'll have a lot of different structural diversities as well with some of these plants. And so one of the main features of this water harvesting landscape is the, the roof water harvesting component of it, where this downspout from these two sections of roof is piped underground and comes out right here into this rock swale. And so as the water, as it rains, water will come out here, start to percolate through some of this rock. There's actually some brick passage under this little bridge here, and then water will flow down into this depression and pool up and, and soak into the soil. And right here we have what's called the spillway or the overflow, and this determines how high the water will pool up before it goes to our next basin and then our next one. And so water can fill up six to 10 inches depending on the, the spot in the basin that, that water will fill up throughout this whole area, start soaking into the soil, move in laterally into the soil. And then when it gets that high, then it'll go over this rock work and fill up and do the same thing in the next pool. And then the third pool and then slowly make its way out to the uh, final overflow onto the sidewalk if we get a really big rain event. And so here we have a couple of plants in our basin. Um, this is uh, Juncus patens. It's a, uh, a rush, so it's a, a wetland plant, but it doesn't require uh, wetland all the time. It's a drought tolerant wetland plant. Um, and here we have mugwort, which is similar, can handle growing in pretty moist conditions, but can also handle dryness. And these are both natives to California in this area. And uh, the plant component is really essential for this type of features function because as these plants grow, their roots help to build soil structure, which helps to improve the ability of the soils to infiltrate water or basically let that water move down into the soil as well as hold on to that moisture so that it's then available longer for the plant roots to access it throughout the drier seasons. Throughout this upland region we have a mix of native and and some Mediterranean uh, climate appropriate drought tolerant plantings patterned to emulate a sort of shrub meadow community. So we really wanted to, to select a palette of planting so when this all fills in, it'll look somewhat similar to something that you might see up in the hills. All the plants in this are very drought tolerant. So after an initial one to two seasons of them getting established, they really will need very little, if any, supplemental irrigation, though they are on drip irrigation now to help them Get, get established, especially without um, having the typical rains. We really take landscapes that aren't realizing their full potential and are often very resource intensive and work with clients to transform them into something that's multifunctional, aesthetic, and really kind of gives back and reinvigorates the local ecology. So in this case, we started with just turf grass that was getting irrigated, mowed, requiring a lot of water and uh, petrochemical resources to maintain that greenness, wasn't used very often, wasn't supporting a lot of wildlife habitat or insectaries, and so we totally tore out the lawn, transformed it so now that we have these water harvesting basins to hold all that stormwater on site and a whole palette of different climate appropriate water-wise plantings.